Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So some time back, I shared a comprehensive MLOps roadmap, machine learning operations roadmap. And after watching that video, a lot of people requested me to share the resources that I followed to master machine learning operations. Unfortunately, when it comes to MLOps, there is no single course or there is no single playlist on YouTube that can take you from zero to hero. So I had to follow a lot of resources and I will share all of those resources in the video step by step. So just make sure you watch this video till the end. Now the first thing, if you want to start your MLOps journey is to focus on DevOps fundamentals. Because after all, MLOps is inspired by DevOps. It does the same thing like what exactly DevOps engineers do with software development lifecycle. MLOps engineers do almost the same thing with ML lifecycle. So you should start with DevOps only then you can be good at MLOps. So for DevOps, you need to understand Linux, Git, Docker, Kubernetes, CI, CD, Terraform, AWS, and Python. Of course, in the same order. And you all know, if you want to master these things for free, so you can just head to our channel. You can go to the courses section and you will find everything absolutely free of cost. All of them are zero to hero resources. So I'll not stress more on the DevOps fundamentals part because they are already available on our channel. Now, the next thing that you need to learn is ML fundamentals. But why do you need to know ML fundamentals if you want to become an MLOps engineer? So basically, as I told you, MLOps engineers reduce the operations with machine learning lifecycle. So basically in your machine learning lifecycle, there are various stages that are involved. For example, data gathering, cleaning of data or, you know, uh, experiment tracking, then model development, model build, model deployment, model monitoring, retraining of the model. So there are various stages that are involved within machine learning lifecycle. And the responsibility of the MLOps engineer is to reduce the operations or manual effort that is involved within this life cycle. Now you can only do it if you understand what is this life cycle and what are various stages within this life cycle. What happens across different stages of the life cycle. Now if you are a DevOps engineer, you already know different stages of SDLC. Same thing you have to do with MLOps as well. So for that, you have to understand what is model development, what is experiment tracking, how data management works, continual learning works, model deployment, model monitoring, model retraining, and project management. End of the day, how the entire project is managed. Now, if you want to learn these resources, one of the finest resources that I came across is full stack deep learning. So this is a free uh, training material. I did not even have to log into it. I just have to follow the content here. And it covered pretty much a lot of things. Uh, experiment management, what exactly it is, what is data management, how models are deployed in real time, what is continual learning. A lot of things are covered as part of full stack deep learning. Otherwise, I also refer to a YouTube playlist. So this is machine learning uh, related YouTube playlist by Chris Nike. So this is a six hours uh, video course, or you can also follow Chris Nike's playlist. This also covers a lot of fundamentals of machine learning. If you want to become MLOps engineer, these basics are enough. But if you want to become ML engineer, you have to deep dive more. That's the fine difference between MLOps and ML. So MLOps engineer does not really have to understand how to write the model or they don't have to write the model. They don't have to dig deep dive into uh, developing the whole model, but understand the entire life cycle. Now, the next step, once you're done with understanding the fundamentals is data version control. 
just like traditionally how we do source code control right through the version control systems like git you also need to set up data version control but the main problem here is that source code files are usually uh, small in size they are usually in mbs in very rare cases they go to gbs but when you are dealing with data you are dealing with large data files so usually git is not preferred as a version control system so you need to know how to deal with large data files outside git and you also need to learn how to perform experiment management and reproduce reproducibility so for this dvc is very popularly used and for dvc i found the dvc documentation very useful so i just had to go through this documentation everything is uh, provided in the order what is dvc how to install it on mac i was using mac and also uh, examples using python reference everything is available in the dvc documentation then once dvc is done so i'm going according to the roadmap according to the steps that i followed even if you watched my uh, ml ops roadmap you would have seen the same order for learning resources so the next thing is track experiments and model registry see so end of the day once you have the model or uh, once you build the model you have to store these models in a registry and you also have to perform experiments you have to track the experiments so for that the popular tools out there are mlflow it will also help you with hyper parameter tuning it helps you with deep learning and as i told you you also need to have understanding of the model registry now you can learn these things personally i followed this playlist on youtube so it's called ml of zoom camp this is a very huge playlist but you know there is a section that covers uh, ml flow so i just went through the videos that are related to ml flow and videos that covered hyper parameter tuning because it was tough to follow the documentation for hyper parameter tuning so i had to also go through these videos to understand it better then the most important part is ci plus cd plus ct so if you are a devops engineer you already know what is ci and what is cd but when it comes to uh, ml ops there is also something called as continuous training very simple whenever developers or you know ml engineers develop a model they initially train it with some amount of data or certain data as the new data keeps coming in unfortunately the efficiency of the model goes down usually people confuse at this part they think more amount of data the efficiency of the model is high but on contrary initially when you train the model you train it with certain amount of data or certain data as the new data keeps coming in the efficiency of the model goes down so you have to continuously train the model on the new data as well only then the efficiency of the model goes high so when it comes to ml ops engineer unlike continuous integration and continuous development continuous training is also required you can also use github actions for this if you come from devops background you might be using github actions same github actions can be used with ml ops as well however the popular tool out there is kubeflow pipelines in general you can learn kubeflow in entire but kubeflow has a lot of components if you are focusing on ci plus cd plus ct you can only go with kubeflow pipelines now if you want to learn kubeflow pipelines very simple you can just go to my playlist so i have ml ops playlist on the channel so within the ml ops playlist i have uh, done an end to end tutorial on kubeflow kubeflow pipeline zero to hero it's a 60 minutes tutorial i have also taken a real life example and i explain how kubeflow pipeline works this also includes a project so that you can gain real life understanding of kubeflow pipelines awesome so the next thing once you are done with ci plus cd plus ct is to serve the models end of the day 
like once you are done with the model development you have to serve this model so that your customers can access it or your clients can access it you cannot keep the model running on your local machine so you have to serve the model for that the most popular ones are fast api and k serve so fast api is basically to uh, expose model along with an application and k serve as the name suggests is for serving the model now you can go with fast api tutorials on the internet so personally when it comes to fast api i found tutorial from my friend uh, sarthak so sarthak made a very good uh, fast api tutorial it's a 4 hours uh, fast api tutorial and i found it very interesting uh, it was also very helpful it covered a few demos through which i was able to learn fast api of course i'll be honest i have good experience with python and i also had some understanding of fast api in the past that might also be one of the reason i was able to learn fast api using that 4 hours tutorial now k serve is again uh, you know it's actually part of um, kubeflow itself not kubeflow pipelines but kubeflow uh, for k serve i just went through the case of documentation and i understood things in the same order so whatever is in the documentation i just followed the same links and i understood k serve it does it does not take a lot of time because end of the day it's just serving the model uh, it would hardly take you 3 to 4 hours to understand k serve and deploy your sample application serve it through k serve now github actions a lot of people think uh, you know when it comes to uh, model continuous integration and continuous development they only look at airflow kubeflow ml flow as an option but trust me using github actions as well you can train most of your models you can implement ci plus cd plus ct of your models unless your models are extremely complex unless you are dealing with a very high performance models you don't you don't have to go, i mean in that case you don't want to use github actions maybe you want to go with kubeflow pipelines but for the basic ones that you are dealing with your proof of concept hobby project small scale models github actions works perfectly fine even on the channel again if you head to our ml ops playlist you will find a video beginner level ml ops project with demo so this is a 40 minutes video in this video i implemented ci plus cd of model i think ct is also covered using github actions so once again you can go through it so the next important piece of uh, machine learning life cycle is monitoring the models so monitoring models is obviously important because you want to see the performance of your model you want to understand uh, what is the response according to the requests that are sent by the customers and if there is any issue you want to send alerts to the uh, engineering team so you can do all of that using model monitoring don't directly start with model monitoring of course you know if you want to look at model monitoring you can use uh, evidently uh, it's a free open source one so you can go with evidently but i wouldn't recommend directly jumping into it what you need to do is first you need to understand the observability itself so you have to uh, go ahead and learn prometheus grafana elk stack because that is going to help you big time and for that we have observability zero to hero playlist which is again free on the channel you don't have to um, you know uh, pay anything for the courses just start with episode 1 and watch the 11 episodes it also includes incident management using pager duty so all of the things are covered as part of this playlist then the next thing is feature stores so basically when you want to uh, go with uh, offline training and online for serving you need a uh, feature stores and feast is a very popular one feast is actually very simple so you just need feast with redis or you just need feast with dragonfly db uh, and you can run it uh, they also have a very good github repository so if you go to their github uh, personally 
I spent good amount of time with their GitHub. If you go to examples, uh, you have Python example, you have Java example. So using these examples, you can run Feast along with the Java server, Redis, or even Dragonfly DB. So this is how I learned about feature stores. Once again, um, I mean, I'll be very honest uh, because I'm sharing this, all of these resources. It does not mean I don't have any prior experience. I just followed all of these resources to make sure I master MLOps, but I have past experience in DevOps and I also have past experience in MLOps, but these resources help me expedite my learning process or these resources help me master MLOps faster. Along with these resources, I occasionally looked into a few other resources as well. I will share all of these resources links. If you are able to capture them, it's 100% fine. Uh, you know, while watching the video, if you're able to capture the names, if you're able to capture the links, it's totally fine. But if you want the links to these resources, because there are so many resources, I cannot put this in the YouTube description, but I will share link to our free newsletter. So I'll put the newsletter link in the description. Just subscribe to the newsletter and you will get all the links along with screenshots, along with the roadmap in tomorrow's newsletter. So either you can go with it or you can pause the video and capture the links. It's up to you. I hope you found the video informative. If you have any questions related to this topic, do let me know in the comment section. I'm more than happy to help you. See you all in the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.